10 years ago in 2011, Sony released the PlayStation Vita. And at the time, it failed miserably. But here we are in 2021, and not only is it more relevant than ever, but the community behind it and the modding scene is also stronger than ever. What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P, and today we're gonna revisit the PlayStation Vita and talk about the one big reason this is still so awesome after all this time, after everyone counted it out, even after Sony discontinued it. That one reason, the mods. But first, why make a video on this, you're asking? Well, after Nintendo's pathetic announcement of the OLED Switch, this is OLED 2, by the way, and Steam just dropped a bomb on us that they're making a Steam Deck, handhelds are seemingly on the rise yet again. And by the way, if you're wondering why this failed, not to get you know too far out of the subject of today's video, like I said, in 2011, you know, mobile gaming was new and on the rise. Everyone now had a smartphone in their pocket. Um, iPhones were dominating the mobile market, and having this just you know gaming device in your pocket was just kind of redundant. Second, Sony kind of shot themselves in the foot by requiring proprietary memory cards for the Vita that were just crazy expensive, and no one wanted to shell out all that extra money just to save your games. Third, it was kind of gimmicky if we're being honest. Again, mobile gaming, already a thing. And Sony, to kind of sort of stay relevant, they had a touch screen on the front, obviously, for inputs. The back was also a touch screen for additional inputs. This had two cameras built in, front and back, an internal gyroscope. And at the end of the day, you know, you don't want to be doing all these extra inputs, swiping up and down on the back just to perform a melee move. I don't want to be using the gyroscope and the cameras to look around to find stuff in game. Game. A lot of it was just extra and unnecessary stuff built into games at the time didn't really work out. So 10 years later, circling back to the intro, mods. The modding community completely revived the Vita, making this single-handedly one of the greatest handhelds capable of emulating all your childhood favorites. Game Boy, Atari, N64, PS1, PS2 even. The power behind the Vita is pretty damn impressive. Recent modders have been successfully porting over popular games like Doom 3, Max Payne, Rockstar's Bully is even one of the more recent ones that's been ported over successfully and runs fantastic. San Andreas even, just some popular and really complex games from the PlayStation 2 era actually running here on the Vita. Imagine, a PS2 in your pocket. So the hardware the Vita's packing was pretty impressive at the time. Even some native Vita games were gorgeous for the era. Games like Killzone Mercenary could pass for the console equivalent. FIFA looked just like FIFA, kinda even so does today. Uncharted Golden Abyss was killer. Final Fantasy X HD looks stunning. So it's no wonder the modders today are sort of really starting to tap into the power the Vita has. Getting your Vita modded and the whole process behind that is a story for a different day. This is not a tutorial video. There's plenty of those out there on YouTube already. If you're curious, you have a Vita yourself and you want to mod yours, or you can just go on eBay and buy one that's already modded. Uh, my unit here has Henkaku, which is you know a jailbreaking tool. Unless we do things like install Adrenaline so I can play old PSP games, some exclusive PS1 titles from the PlayStation Store. Installing something like RetroArch is great for loading up ROMs of all your favorite Game Boy games. Playing Pokemon on an OLED screen, by the way, is just awesome on here. N64 emulators. It's honestly just a giant nostalgia trip. Going through and playing games I loved as a kid or never got to play as a kid. And it's crazy to readily have thousands of games all in your pocket because Game Boy games are like five megabytes. You know, the typical N64 game is anywhere from like 12 to 18 megabytes. So literally, I have every Game Boy and N64 title loaded onto here. And revisiting it is fun as hell. Now, yeah, most modern phones can do this stuff too, and there's definitely a fair bit of Android emulators out there, but the main thing that separates the two from, you know, mobile gaming to a, a Vita emulated device is the fact that you have physical controls. Makes gaming 10 times better. And not every single port or game is going to run perfectly on here. You know, there's a fair bit of games that do have some glitches or problems just due to the port itself. Not that the Vita can't, you know, power and run the game successfully, more so that just the port itself is bad. But again, the fact the modding community is still active, giving us new PS2 titles, always growing, and even been releasing updated Daedalus N64 versions that make it more stable and capable of running some N64 games that had issues in the past. Things like GoldenEye and Pokemon Stadium, for example, where ports that did not run well now are being improved. So as you've seen, I do have two models here. The black one is the original PlayStation Vita. It's the 1000 series. It has, you know, a nice OLED screen, pretty bulky overall, but it has an aluminum construction and stuff. 
And then they even released a 2000 series a few years later, which ditches the OLED screen, unfortunately. It's LCD, it's lighter, it's thinner, it's all plastic. But it's interesting because they still released this knowing that after the third week of its release, that it was dramatically underselling. And what's even crazier than putting out a second edition is the fact this was available in so many different colors and color combos. But then they kind of doubled down and released a ton of special edition releases alongside some certain games that had this really cool like design or print on the back of the Vita. All very ambitious if you think about it for a device that Sony knew they were taking a massive L on at the time. And you may remember a few years ago, I did a video on handhelds as a genre and I had a blue one back then and I actually use that pretty consistently because one of the really cool features that the Vitas have built in is called Remote Play, where you can actually play your PS3 and PS4 games through your Vita. You can stream it right to the device, or some games even let you uh, use the Vita sort of like a smart controller, where instead of using your DualSense or DualShock controller, you're using the Vita. And then on the screen, it would do things like have your map or an inventory. So it was really kind of cool. My first experience with that was back when I bought a PS3 off of Craigslist, probably in like 2012. I think I was actually playing Killzone. And it was just really cool to control my PlayStation from my Vita and have all these extra things on the screen here. So thousands of games, pretty much any title starting from like the 1980s all the way up to 2003 could be ran and emulated on the Vita. Also including obviously all the PSP games you can download plus the entire Vita library. So should you buy a Vita today? Yes, hands down. For everything we talked about today, for the whole modding scene, the community behind this still, the power this has untapped seemingly, since we were getting, you know, PS2 games. Running on these, definitely a dream device for emulators. Running those old Game Boy games you wanna go revisit. Play Pokemon on here, N64. It's a really, really great device that at the time was underappreciated and definitely underutilized but now the power of the community still growing 10 years later. I want to say it launched for 250 at the time, right around that price. Um, you can find these pretty you know, readily on eBay. You can get them imported from Japan for around like 150 and below. I believe this one was $111 imported from Japan, which is a steal. I modded it myself, very simple. Um, also on eBay, you can just go and buy devices that people have already modded for you and loaded ROMs onto it. Probably gonna be a bit more expensive if you do that, but again, if you don't wanna take the time and learn to do it yourself, there are probably options out there where you can already buy them modded with Henkaku on it and then download RetroArch, put all your ROMs and games on there. It's a hell of a fun trip, I'll tell you that. And uh, hopefully, like I said, with the new, you know, the OLED switch coming out, but I think the Steam Deck is going to really sort of, you know, give handhelds new life. And maybe Sony, even though their focus right now is on the PS5, maybe that'll be enough to push them to give us a Vita 2 or a new Vita device handhelds within the next few years or so. That'd be cool. So all right guys, that'll wrap it up for my video on revisiting the PlayStation Vita in 2021. Hope you all enjoyed. If you dig this video, a big thumbs up to show your support. Feel free to follow me on Twitter, at RandomFrankP. And last, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. I hope you all enjoyed. Have a good day.